Hello everyone and welcome to my virtual Lunch and Learn. My name is Olivia Parker and today I'm going to be talking about an online quiz tool called Kahoot. Kahoot is an online platform used to generate quizzes, discussions, or surveys that students can participate in during lectures or as you assign them to the student. In the classroom, Kahoot could be displayed on a TV monitor or a projector, but in our case, in a virtual situation, you can just display it on your screen and then students can participate. I chose this topic because whether you're in a synchronous or asynchronous classroom, student engagement and participation can sometimes be a challenge, whether you're in a face-to-face -face or a virtual classroom. You can use a Kahoot a number of ways for both summative and formative assessment. First, sparking interest at the beginning of a topic, unit, or lecture. Second is formative assessment. Finally, Kahoot could be treated as a brain break or reward. Hello everyone, so now I'm on my screen and I have navigated to Kahoot.com and I'm going to create my account. So if I choose sign up, I'm going to choose teacher. I work in higher education. And then you're going to put in an email address and I'm going to put in a password. I'm going to hit sign up. You immediately see all these pay plans, but if you want the basic, you got to go down here and click this tiny little link. So I'm going to choose get basic for free. What you see right now is a basic account. When I'm ready to create a new Kahoot, I will go to Kahoots. And then I end up in this dashboard. So I'm going to create a Kahoot about Garfield the cat from the comic strip. So I would hit create new and I would choose create new Kahoot and I would set my settings. So the Garfield quiz and I would click done. So each question has a couple of different options. So we're going to start with the first question, which is what is Garfield's favorite food? You can set a time limit for how long your students will have to think about and answer the question. You can assign the question points. So depending on how quickly or how correct they are in their responses, they get a percentage of points. And then you can build your question. So in this case, I'm going to upload an image when you're building your responses, you must have two responses so that you can do true and false questions. So now I would pick my four responses, which were salmon, lasagna, and I would mark this one as the correct answer. Now, if I do not want to use words, I can use a photo instead. So I can upload an image of salmon. So now I have picture responses instead of ver word responses. And I can rearrange the order of these questions if I want to. And then you would build out your quiz. And once you're satisfied with your quiz, you would hit done. And that quiz will appear in your Kahoot dashboard. When you're ready to play your quiz, you have two options. You can teach or you can assign. We're going to start with the teach. Here's where I set up the conditions of my quiz. So we're going to do classic, which is one player and one device. And we're going to set up some of these settings. So I can randomize the order of questions. I can randomize the order of answers. If you want students to use their real names, you wouldn't turn on the friendly nickname generator. And when I'm done setting up these conditions, I'm going to choose classic. Now students are ready to join your Kahoot. You would send out this game pin to your students and ask them to go to the website and put in that game pin. So let's look at a demo of a Kahoot quiz. As you can see on the screen, the student is entering the pin into their mobile device so that they can become part of the lobby. The teacher is controlling the actual Kahoot and they will determine when it starts. Once the Kahoot starts, students answer the questions they see on the screen. They have a specific amount of time to answer the questions and they answer them on their mobile device by matching the correct answer to the appropriate color symbol combination. They're then told what their score is and if they got the answer correct or not. They're then put on a leaderboard so you can see the students that are performing the best. This is what creates that competitive option. As the student answers more questions, they change position on the leaderboard. At the end of the Kahoot quiz, you'll see the final results. 
The position that the students have, whether first, second, or third, and the student will see as well, their position. Once you're done your Kahoot, you're going to want to analyze the results as part of either formative or summative assessment. To do that, you navigate to the Reports tab. Within the Reports tab, you would pick the Kahoot you want to assess, and then you get a whole wealth of information. You can see who participated and drill down and see the exact questions they got right and wrong. For more information or to take this data and composite it elsewhere, you can choose the report options. This will allow you to download an Excel sheet. You don't only have to use Kahoot's as part of a synchronous class or a virtual lecture you have the option to assign Kahoot's that can be completed at a later date. To do this, you navigate back to your Kahoot's dashboard, and this time when you hit play, you choose Assign, and this will assign a challenge. So when I hit Assign, it's going to create a challenge. I'm going to say the date that I want the challenge completed by, and I'll say Monday, the 27th of July and I want it to be completed by 10 p.m. And this will allow me to create my challenge. Once you've created your challenge, you can copy the link, you can tweet it to Twitter, or you could share it through Teams, which is really good if you're using Teams for your classes, which means when you're connected to your STU account, you're able to search for your class and your channel of choice and share your Kahoot directly with your students. Thank you so much for listening and have a lovely afternoon.